I'm taking my sister to the hospital. So can you lend me some money? My eight-year-old grandson walked for an hour in heavy snow to reach our house. He carried his two-year-old sister, who had a fever on his back. Both of them looked quite exhausted. I wonder what my son and daughter-in-law are doing. When I tried to take my shivering grandchildren into the house, my husband shouted at me. There's no way I'm lending you money. I tried to scold him. You don't have to say such a terrible thing when I saw my grandchildren frightened by my husband. But my husband ignored me and did something even more surprising. My name is Ella, a 60-year-old housewife. I lived peacefully with my 65-year-old husband, Levi. We have a son named Henry who got married and moved out 10 years ago. Henry has two children, an eight-year-old son named Owen and a two-year-old daughter named Lila. They are precious to us. My husband and I were looking forward to their visits. However, Henry's behavior has been strange for the past three months. He was always a bit careless, even when he was living with us. He would pile up laundry and leave it unattended. To make matters worse, his wife is not good at housework either. When I visited their house right after they got married, there were clothes scattered all over the place, and there was no place to step on. It was always messy. I wonder if these two will be able to manage when they have children. However, ten years have passed since then, and when Henry and his wife came to visit, both grandchildren were very healthy. Owen was especially mature for his age, so I was relieved. Just then, Henry arrived with the grandchildren. Owen is always a good boy who helps with housework. He doesn't cause any trouble, so it's a relief. Oh, really? That's good. It's a relief that he doesn't take after his father. Ha <laughs> ha. What do you mean? I smiled at Henry, who was pretending to be a little silly. But even though Owen was quite mature, he was still only eight years old. I was worried that he might be burdened with housework because his parents couldn't do it. Grandma, can I have some pocket money? Sure. I have to give a reward to a good boy who always helps his father and mother. I took out ten dollars from my wallet, but Henry quickly took it from me. Hey, Henry. What are you doing? Oh, come on! He's your first grandchild. You should be more generous than that. Ten dollars is not enough at all. Henry took one hundred dollars from my wallet without permission. And he did this several times, so my husband Levi finally got angry and scolded Henry. But this was not good. My husband is a scary and stubborn person. Even though my grandchildren were already afraid of him, he shouted at Henry with a devilish expression, which made them scared and not want to come to our house anymore. In the end, it's been three months since I last saw my grandchildren. Since then, only Henry has come to see us occasionally, but he always asks for pocket money for his children. Hey, can't you let me see my grandchildren? If you want to see them that badly, why don't you use a video call on the internet? But I remember that you are not good at that kind of thing. Henry said with a sneer. However, what he said was true. My husband and I couldn't even use the internet. More importantly, it's money, money. Where's your wallet? Henry was worried only about the pocket money for his children and was rummaging around for it. I sighed in exasperation. The wallet is in the safe. We've taken measures so that you can't take money from it without permission. What? 
What's that? Well, forget it then. Henry said, and he left quickly. I realized that he had been coming for money all along, and I felt a little complicated. Even so, he wears expensive watches and gold necklaces and dresses so well, but I wonder if he's living within his means. Since he got married, Henry has become strangely wasteful and has become flashy. He works for a company that deals with children's products, and I heard that he gets a pretty good salary, but it doesn't seem to match his expenses. I was thinking about such things when Henry stopped coming to our house. Three months later, on a snowy night, someone rang the doorbell. Hello. Oh? Owen? What's wrong? Standing in front of the entrance was my grandson, carrying his sister on his back. Lila has a fever. I'm taking her to the hospital. Can you lend me some money? Both of them looked thin and poor, and they seemed to be in bad shape. I was shocked to see Owen carrying his sister all the way here in this heavy snow. Why is this happening? What are Henry and his wife doing? I was worried and confused, but I tried to take my shivering and pale grandchildren into the house. However, my husband Levi shouted at them. There's no way I'm lending you money. Owen trembled at Levi's harsh words, and he was frightened. You can't say that now, can you? I was about to scold Levi for saying such a terrible thing when he suddenly ran to the grandchildren and hugged them tightly. Both Owen and I were surprised and speechless. That's not it. If you want, I'll do everything for you. I want you to rely on us for everything. You're not angry, are you? I'm so angry with those stupid sons of mine but I can't abandon my grandchildren who are in such bad shape. Levi was crying while hugging his grandchildren, who looked painful. He was stubborn and often misunderstood, but he loved his grandchildren from the bottom of his heart. Soon after that, Levi, Owen, and I took Lila to the hospital. The doctor examined her and said that her symptoms were not life-threatening. Her fever went down quickly, and she was able to return home on the same day. When we got home, Owen, who was looking at his sleeping sister with a relieved expression, told us what had happened. My husband and I were horrified by what we heard. Dad and Mom leave me in charge of the house and Lila and go somewhere right away. I do everything from washing dishes to cleaning the bath and toilet. What? Do you know where your parents are going? No. But mom comes back with a lot of expensive bags. And dad comes back with a delicious smell. From my grandson's story, it was speculated that his wife was buying brand name bags. In addition, it can be seen that the couple is eating out alone. They probably don't even feed their own children properly. Is that why you're so thin? Levi gently stroked Owen's arm. Dad said we're the money tree. My husband and I were shaken by Owen's unexpected words. They're filming us skinny and putting it on the internet. What? Is that true? Yeah. And people who felt sorry for us put money in crowdfunding, I think. Hey, what's that? Crowdfunding is a way to collect money from an unspecified number of people over the internet. In other words, my son and daughter-in-law spent three months making their children look skinny and poor, and they were taking advantage of people who felt sorry for them. When I think about it, it makes sense that Henry didn't introduce us to our grandchildren for the past three months. My husband and I were trembling with anger and shock. What are those two thinking? Hey, call Henry. Call him right now. 
I called my son from my smartphone, but I couldn't get in touch with him. That's strange. Is he not at home? Do you know where your parents are? I don't remember. They said they were going to Hawaii and told me to do the housework properly. What did you say? Henry and his wife left their children at home and went on a trip abroad. However, my grandchildren say they weren't told any more details. Maybe we'll find out something if we go to their house. Levi drove me and my two grandchildren to my son's house and used the key Owen gave us to enter the house. The room was still messy, and there was no place to step on. We searched for a place to walk and moved forward, pushing aside things that had fallen. Then, Hey! This was next to the phone! My husband shouted out loud. The paper he was holding had a date, time, alphabet, and something like a number written on it. Is this? When I checked the string of characters on my smartphone, it was the airline and flight number, as expected. That means the date and time are the time they went to Hawaii and the time they returned to America, respectively. From there, we found out that they would return tomorrow afternoon at 4 o'clock. We were burning with anger and decided to prepare to avenge our grandchildren until then. First, we decided to stay at our son's house. After cooking delicious food for our grandchildren and feeding them, Owen cried and said, It's delicious. It's delicious. He ate as if he were biting into it, and Lila moved her mouth and chewed. We were about to cry when we saw them. After bathing our grandchildren and putting them to bed, I contacted someone on my smartphone. Henry and his wife, I'll never forgive them. Just wait and see. Then, the next day at four o'clock in the afternoon, the four of us came to the airport. In the lobby, people waiting to return home were happily reunited with those who came out of the exit. Among them, Levi and I frowned and waited silently. Soon, my son and daughter-in-law came out of the gate with a wreath made of flowers around their necks, looking like they had just returned from Hawaii. Welcome back. It looks like you had a fun trip. What? Why are you guys here? As soon as he saw us, Henry and his wife tried to escape. Levi grabbed their shoulders and didn't let go. Can you tell us what's going on? Hey, stop it, let go! Beside the raging sun, his wife also. Security guard, please help me! Made a big fuss. We originally wanted to talk in a different place, but we had no choice but to confront them on the spot. Henry, I heard the story from Owen. You seem to have put your grandchildren through a lot of trouble. Ha! Huh. Owen, you snitched to this old lady? Shut up! Owen, who flinched at the sight of his father trying to grab him, was not allowed to do so by Levi. He grabbed Henry by the scruff of his neck and pulled him back forcibly, causing Henry to Ow! let out a choked voice. The wife, crying, Please stop! shouted, and the bystanders began to gather around. So I took a deep breath and let out a loud voice that echoed throughout the area. Making the kids do all the housework and going on a trip to Hawaii. What a good life you have. Why didn't you take them with you? That's because... He stammered, his face covered with sweat, and looked around nervously. If you can't answer, I'll tell you. Um, what's this? 
Please lend a hand of love to the children who are struggling to eat. Please donate from this site. Mom, stop it. This is the internet page you made to collect donations, right? I shoved the screen of my smartphone in front of Henry's eyes. It was a crowdfunding site created by the son and his wife. There was a large photo of Owen, who was skinny and ragged, and his sister Lila, who was carried on his back. To top it off, there was even a video of Owen being forced to say, I'm hungry. Please donate. Henry was shocked and astonished. How? Mom, you're not supposed to be doing any internet stuff, right? That's true, but I can at least ask a friend who knows about that kind of thing. Damn it! Is that what it is? This page has been spread a lot, and my friends knew about it too. Yes, the person I was contacting last night after putting the kids to bed was a female friend of the same age who is proficient in using the internet. When I found out that my grandchildren were being used for crowdfunding, her face popped into my mind. I sent a photo of Owen to my friend to confirm, and as I expected, I recognize this child, and I even donated to him. That was the reply I got. You didn't want to let go of the kids because they were making money for you. But you knew it would be bad for you if you took them on a trip and your lives were exposed. So you went to Hawaii by yourselves, right? Tut. Yeah, that's right. Henry frowned and looked down, silent for a while. But then, he suddenly started shaking his shoulders and chuckling. But you know, Mom, you may not know this, but the thing about the internet is that I can erase all the pages, photos, and videos on a site like this with the push of a delete button. You! How rotten can you be? I'll clean it up later. Sorry for you. Levi was furious, but Henry's wife. I don't think violence is good. And she made a big fuss again. I felt pathetic and almost sighed. Listen, Henry. If you had admitted and regretted what you did, I might have been more lenient with you. Ha, huh, what are you going to do, old lady? You think I haven't thought of any countermeasures. But my friend has already taken pictures of the site's pages and saved all the images and videos for me. Henry looked stunned, then. Ha! Huh. What? His face turned pale in an instant. When Levi let go of him, he collapsed to the floor on his knees. He couldn't stand up and crawled on the floor, clinging to my feet. Wait, Mom! Let's talk calmly. I'm very calm. What are you going to do with those saved images and videos? No, don't tell me. Please, just spare me that. You know what kind of position I'm in, right? I told you to stop it. His wife yelled at him. But Henry said, Just apologize. You too. He grabbed her head and pulled her hair. Too late. Look around you. My son and his wife reluctantly looked up and opened their eyes wide. That's because the crowd of onlookers around them were all pointing their smartphones at them. Henry said, Wow! Stop it! Don't take pictures! He panicked and covered his face with both hands, but it was too late. I'm cutting ties with you too, and we'll take Owen and Lila. You don't deserve to be parents.
I took my grandchildren with me and left the airport with a firm attitude. After that, the video taken by the onlooker spread. A friend who was watching my son and his wife's site posted the truth while protecting the children's privacy, and their lies were exposed. They were accused of fraud and got a lot of backlash. It also reached Henry's company, and he was fired on the spot because they dealt with children-related products. His face was clearly shown in the video, so there's nowhere for them to go from now on. On the other hand, we filed a lawsuit to permanently revoke their parental rights. The claim was accepted, and we were able to take and raise our grandchildren. The two of them have become attached to my husband since the incident, and he loves them very much. The sound of lively children fills the house, and I'm very happy now. How did you like this story? Please also subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video. You are such a terrible person. Get out of here right now. I don't even want to see your face. My husband, who believed my mother-in-law's lie, said that and kicked me out of the house. My mother-in-law was laughing at me from behind. I don't care anymore. If he's going to do that, I won't show any mercy either. I'll send you to hell. My name is Amy. I'm a 32-year-old nurse. I've been married to my husband Mason for three years. I have a busy job with night shifts, but Mason is understanding and treats me kindly. I'm home. You're late again today. Sorry, one of my patient's condition worsened. It's okay. Being a nurse is tough. Thank you. Sorry, I just bought some side dishes. It's okay. I like those side dishes. I also prepared bread and soup. Wow, thank you. That helps a lot. Mason helps me with these simple household chores. It's really helpful when I'm busy with work. He takes care of me and I think I was able to marry a good husband. It's been three years since we got married, but thanks to Mason's kindness, we still have a very good relationship. I thought we would continue to live happily as a couple and eventually build a happy family with children. However, something happened and our relationship gradually changed. It happened one day. On a holiday, when we were resting at home, Mason received a call from his mother. Hello, Mom. What's up? I'm sorry to bother you all of a sudden. There's something I'm worried about. What? Something worrying? Actually, your father is acting strange. Strange? I don't know how to put it, but he's showing some symptoms of dementia. What? Are you kidding me? He still remembers my name and such, so I think it's mild, but I'm worried about what will happen in the future. Oh, I know. If there's anything I can do, just tell me. Thank you, Mason. After hanging up the phone, Mason told me that his father was suspected of having dementia. I'm worried about my dad. He's been healthy until now, so I'm worried. I want to do something for him. Yeah. If there's anything I can do to help, I'll do it. Thank you, Amy. I looked for a good hospital to visit for dementia and asked other nurses at work. I was prepared for anything that might happen. But things took an unexpected turn. It was Mason's words that triggered it. One day, Mason told me that he had something to talk to me about. What is it? I sat across from Mason at the dining table, drinking coffee after dinner. 
I stopped stirring my coffee with a spoon when Mason said something unbelievable. I'm thinking of living with my mother and father. What? Living together? Don't you remember I told you that my father was suspected of having dementia? His symptoms have gotten worse, and my mother is having a hard time. So I thought we should move back. It would help prevent his condition from worsening, and we could take care of him if anything happened. Of course, you'll help my father too, right? Uh, well. You said you'd help before, didn't you? I said I would help by finding a hospital or something, but I never agreed to live with them. Amy, do you not want to live with them? Don't you care about my parents? No, it's not that. Then it's okay, right? Mason decided to force us to live together. I felt a little uneasy about the way he decided it without asking me. I was shocked that Mason, who is usually so kind, would force us to live together like this. But he has always been understanding of my work and helped with household chores. Although I don't agree with what he did this time, I started to think that maybe I should accept living with his parents, considering all the kindness and gratitude he has shown me so far. That's how I convinced myself. I reported to my parents that we had decided to live together. I see. Dementia is tough, so I understand the desire to cooperate as a family. But don't push yourself too hard. You can come back here anytime if something happens. Your home is here. Thank you, mom and dad. And so we moved into my in-law's house and started living together with them. Nice to meet you from today. Yes. Nice to meet you too. I'm sorry to ask so soon, but could you prepare lunch? Oh, yes, I understand. It was around lunchtime, so I started preparing right away. We had lunch together with my in-laws and then I washed the dishes and started unpacking. That's when my father-in-law suddenly spoke to me. Is lunch ready yet? What? You had lunch, didn't you? Huh? Did I? Yes, let's go back to the living room and not disturb the unpacking. I was relieved that my mother-in-law helped me, but I saw that my father-in-law had dementia. He's definitely showing symptoms. Maybe I should introduce him to a hospital soon. I'm still worried about my dad. Yeah, me too. He hasn't been examined at the hospital yet, right? Yeah, he seems to really hate going to the hospital. It's taking a lot of effort to convince him. I see. I understand that this won't be easy. I'll do everything I can to help. Thanks. I'm glad you're my wife. You're very reliable. Mason. I was happy to be appreciated like that by Mason. I still don't agree with the fact that we were forced to live together, but there's nothing we can do now that we've started living together. I'll just do my best in this environment. I decided to communicate well with my in-laws from now on. I think the cohabitation was going well at first because Mason explained everything to my mother-in-law, and she showed understanding about my job. So on days when I had night shifts, my mother-in-law took the lead on household chores, which was a great help to me. However, the situation gradually began to change, and my share of the household chores increased. On nights when I had night shifts. My mother-in-law asked me to prepare breakfast for my in-laws and Mason before work, so my role was to prepare breakfast for them the next day. It was quite a hassle, and it was also physically exhausting to cook dinner too. 
and it wasn't just night shifts that were difficult. Even on days when I was a little late, my mother-in-law would get very angry. What time do you think it is? It's already past 6 p.m. I'm starving, so make dinner quickly. I'm sorry, work ran late. I don't want to hear your excuses. You're the daughter-in-law who came to this house, so fulfill your role properly. My mother-in-law yelled at me unreasonably. My mother-in-law seemed to be putting herself first all the time and stopped considering my circumstances. At first, she seemed to be trying to put on a good face, but her unreasonable behavior became worse and worse. When I bought side dishes because I was busy with work, she would say, You're not going to feed us this kind of food. And throw it in the trash. I can see why Mason has been treated so badly until now. But from now on, I won't let you do whatever you want. I'll guide you to become a good daughter-in-law. My mother-in-law said that, but throwing away side dishes without touching them is too cruel. That night, I talked to Mason about it. I reported all the unreasonable things my mother-in-law had said to me in detail. But Mason didn't take my side. Isn't it because of your attitude? What? Mom is a wonderful person. She's trying to guide you, right? Isn't that something to be grateful for? And she's right. You shouldn't buy side dishes. If you were a normal housewife, you'd cook homemade meals. That's... I have night shifts, you know? Then quit your job and become a housewife. You can do both household chores and caregiving if you quit your job. What? Are you serious? I have to say that because you're not doing your household chores properly. If you don't like it, do your household chores properly. Okay. I understand. I was suddenly disillusioned with Mason. I thought he would be on my side. But to win the trust of Mason and my mother-in-law, I had no choice but to work hard on household chores. I'm competitive, so I tried to do my best. I wouldn't let them complain. With that in mind, I worked hard to balance housework and work but my mother-in-law never recognized my efforts. Your cleaning is sloppy. You're slow with the laundry. Your cooking is terrible. You're a terrible daughter-in-law. No matter how hard I tried, my mother-in-law never recognized me. She even started to lie to Mason more and more. For example, she said I was meeting another man in town, gambling, or taking money from my mother-in-law's wallet. She made statements that could be sued for defamation. And Mason believed it all. What are you doing? Cheating, gambling, and stealing? That's not something a person can do. Wait a minute, do you believe your mother's lies? I would never do such a thing. Every time Mason blamed me, I tried to explain myself desperately. I couldn't believe he would believe my mother-in-law's lies. Are you saying mom is lying? Yes, your mother is lying. Don't talk bad about mom. She's a kind and wonderful person. Kind and wonderful? That's far from the truth about my mother-in-law. At least I've never seen that side of her. Mom is tired from taking care of dad. Don't do anything that will make her more troubled. Why does he believe my mother-in-law's words so easily? I was getting more and more angry with Mason. If he doesn't believe me at all, then I don't need to be Mason's wife. 
I started to think that way. And in the midst of all this, I learned a surprising fact. It happened one day when I received a text message from a junior nurse while I was working. She was supposed to be off today. I opened my smartphone during my break and saw the message. The contents were surprising. I saw someone who looked like your husband walking with a young woman. They were walking arm in arm, and it didn't look like they were just acquaintances. She wasn't your husband's sister or anything, was she? My hand holding the smartphone trembled. I couldn't believe that Mason, who suspected me of having an affair, was having an affair himself. Or rather, because he was having an affair, he might be suspicious of me. I immediately hired a private investigator. Evidence was collected in no time. I decided to divorce and leave that house. I was preparing for the future. But in the midst of all this, Mason suddenly yelled at me in anger. Hey! Do you know what you're doing? What? What are you talking about? You tried to feed my parents rotten food for breakfast, didn't you? What? No, I didn't. Besides, today's breakfast was... Shut up! Don't lie to me! But I'm not lying. I didn't have time to cook that day. So I bought various ingredients that they could eat by themselves, like bread, jam, and yogurt, and put them in the fridge. I didn't make anything for my in-laws. That means my mother-in-law is lying. But Mason wouldn't listen to a word I said. You're such a lowlife. Get out of here. I don't want to see your face. He kicked me out of the house after believing my mother-in-law's lies. My mother-in-law was laughing at me from behind. I don't care anymore. If that's how he feels, I won't show any mercy. I'll drag you down to hell. Fine, I'll leave. I packed my bags and left my in-law's house. Then I went back to my parents' house. My parents were surprised to see me come back so suddenly, but they were outraged when I explained the situation. That's unbelievable! I can't believe they were such a terrible family! Like I said before, you can stay here as long as you want. I felt a surge of relief from my parents' kindness. I must have been under a lot of stress at my in-law's house. I was able to relax and rest my body at my parents' house for the first time in a long time. I also started working by going from my parents' house. I still had some of my belongings at my in-laws' house, but I was able to bring back the essentials, so it wasn't a problem. About a week later, Mason called me, but I ignored him. He kept calling me, but I ignored him. I prepared for the divorce. About a month after I left my in-law's house, I visited them. It was a day off, so Mason was at home. Oh, you finally came back. How are you? Have you reflected on your mistakes? I thought you must be really depressed because you didn't answer the phone. Well, from now on, You'll have to take care of mom and dad. He said that to me. And my mother-in-law was smirking with her arms crossed. I'll teach you a good lesson, so be prepared. They seemed to think that I came back. They probably expected me to beg for forgiveness. But I didn't come here to return to my in-law's house. I came here to divorce. I handed the divorce papers to Mason in front of me. Ha! Huh? What's that? What? Mason froze when he realized it was a divorce paper. What do you mean, you want to divorce me? Yes, then please sign here. 
Hey, wait a minute. It's crazy to suddenly divorce me. Mason looked panicked. And so did my mother-in-law. That's right. You can't just divorce him like that. You have a duty to help us as his wife. I don't need his permission to divorce him in this case. It's an absolute divorce. I can fight you in court if you want. Wait! My mother-in-law was flustered by the word court. And she couldn't say anything else and just froze. I just came to get the rest of my stuff today. Besides, your father's dementia was a lie, right? I heard your conversation from your room the other day. You thought if you said he needed care, I would have to live with you, right? But it worked out well, didn't it? I also heard you praising him for his great acting. So he wasn't really demented, right? That's why he refused to go to the hospital so stubbornly. That's... My mother-in-law was shaken by the fact that I saw through her lie. Ignoring her, I packed up my stuff and left my in-law's house. And I got in my father's car waiting outside and went back to my parents' house. After that, I divorced Mason through a lawyer and demanded alimony from Mason and his mistress. I got them to pay $30,000 each. Mason's affair became known at his company and it became a big problem. Apparently, his mistress was his boss's wife. It became a messy situation and Mason was demoted and transferred to a local branch. It's all his own fault, and he deserves it. And my former mother-in-law was punished by fate. She got a slipped disc and had to be hospitalized for a while. As a result, there was no one who could do the housework. And my former father-in-law had to take care of himself. But he couldn't cook or clean at all. He couldn't cook for himself, so he ate what he bought every day. And because of that, he got sick and had to go to the hospital. They all got what they deserved. On the other hand, I became single and moved back to my parents' house and got a better environment to work hard. So I'm working harder than ever. Thanks to that, I got promoted. I don't need love for a while, so I'll just focus on my work and earn a lot of money. And save up more and more. How did you like this story? Please also, subscribe, to my channel. See you in the next video.